mid-coast Maine, dead of winter. Zach wanted us to come up here in summertime, but we were going for that Stephen King creepy New England look where every Victorian home contains the possibility of horror beyond imagining. Go sailing? That sounds like a good idea. Ah, you gonna keep an eye on him? Okie doke. The unofficial leader of this group is this guy, Chris Biggert. Chris Biggert, good to meet you. In the last few years, Chris has been restoring this old sailing loft located right on the harbor, which doubles as his house and base of operations. I was thinking sailboat, like with a cabin, a big wooden wheel. These are one-man boats. Right. So you're gonna get up here and you're gonna try to stay to the center of the boat. All right. I know it's cold and all, but I figured with the right clothes, you know, knit watch cap, yellow slicker, I'd look like the Gordon's fisherman dude. You know, like all manly and <laughs> But no, apparently I'm going sailing in like a Dixie cup, a vessel only slightly larger than a bathtub rubber duck, and I know where this is going, right? All right, you ready to tack? Yeah. I know what the money shot here is. Tony gets done. Hilarity ensues. When I tell you to, you shift over, all right? Yeah. Come on, baby. Here it goes. <laughs> All right, come on. You almost made it. <laughs> you all right? Yeah. <laughs> Having done my duty with only moderate vestigial moistness resulting, it's time for some food. Picnic has moved inside. We've been uh, pushed by the elements into a nice, warm, dry place. So I can't say I'm unhappy about that. Oh, this is, uh, what, what, what is it called again? Yeah. Right. Yeah. We make, I've been trying to make this for years. See, this was worth all that. Oh, Melissa you. Kelly showed up and brought along some homemade andouille, a spicy pork sausage that originates from the Calabria region of southern Italy, and a Provencal-style bread and haddock stew that absolutely hits the spot. God, that smells good. This room smelled real happy the minute I came in. After a, a cold dunking, this is exactly what you kind of... We do this every week. Really? Yeah. You live like this all the time? Yeah, all the time. This is just awesome. So does your average Mainer eat like this? I kind of want to be you, actually. I'm mean, thinking about your life. It just, it really doesn't suck me. It doesn't. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It's not bad. What, what neighborhood would this be? This mid-coast. Mid, mid-coast, what does that mean? Mid between here and where? The top of Maine. The top of Maine <laughs> and the bottom of Maine. So what makes this, like we've been in Portland so far, and here we are in Rockland, and we're about to go to Milo. Where the hell is Milo? Oh, really? Milo, yeah, I don't know where it is. He keeps playing banjo music every time he says we're gonna be going to Milo. Milo, you're gonna meet some locals. You're gonna meet some Mainers. The thing that's funny about this area is it's less Mainers. It seems to be a lot more boat people. But then what in Milo? What am I looking at here? I mean, bean supper. Trapping. Bean supper. No <laughs> crap. <laughs> Trapping. Ma, to do a pretty lips. Yeah. 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 I, I, I have some concerns. <laughs> what does it mean to be a Mainer? Well, I think it means to always be cold. <laughs> what do you think about people from Portland? I think people from Portland butter the bread on both sides. That's profound. <laughs> think that about was that. a good one, right? <laughs> so what's the deal? This guy Bordine, he all right or what? Yeah, he's good guy. Yeah, you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Nice shrimps, mussels. Yeah, they usually ask you, like, what you want when you're still standing. Do you know? I don't know. Should I be thinking about this? Just because I got to decide now, right? Well, they kind of like that. All right, we'll figure it out right, over yeah. here, right? Why? Well, it's like Louis Primus coming to town. I my whole day today. This man is a legend, an anomaly, a self-professed fishmonger, reluctant restaurateur, poet, recluse. How does one describe John Conti? He's old school. Throws pans around, he's, reads poetry. You gotta get the pan hot. Get the pan hot over here. I don't really care what people think. 
Yeah, like he'll tell you, he's not a chef. He just, he's just, he's just a fish guy. And he's been here for years. Oh yeah. Conti's is a ramshackle, much-loved mainstay of the Rockland restaurant scene. He either loved this place with a fierce passion or runs screaming at first sight. Like John, it kind of makes no sense in the conventional meaning of that word. But like with John himself, the enlightened few will come to know that surely this is a very good thing. He doesn't sit either. Guy never sits. Never sits. Never sits. So we get a lot of food. A lot of help you're hungry. How many people we got? Two right now. That's all we're cooking for is two people now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anthony, you're killing me. Killing me, Anthony. Killing me. As John will tell you himself on the rare occasions he decides to come out of his kitchen, this ain't haute cuisine. It's like free jazz with screamingly fresh ingredients. It's like Pharaoh Sanders only working with garlic and seafood. He does what he wants and pretty much f you if you don't like it. OK, so we're going to give him a little taste of scallops, OK? Diver scallops. These are pemaquats. Look at that, mate. Beautiful look. Look at that. Steamed mussels with garlicky tomato sauce. A fat slab of halibut, cooked plain and simple and good. How can you eat all this food? Come on. Octopus cooked quickly at high heat. A lot of lemon, again with the garlic, and why not, butter. How does Anthony do this? I mean, what's he do? Like starve himself all day or two days? Good oh, beautiful thing. Try Thank you. And get you nice started. thing. Thank you. Those are some happy looking muscles. I gotta, I gotta say, it's nice and plump. Those are good. Oh, here we go. Let's live in. Better make some room here. Yeah. There we go. Thank you. Dude, that's a beautiful piece of fish. I mean, see, this is perfection all by itself. Delicate, lovely. Can't beat that, my friend. Uh-uh. Is he eating all that food? Some of it? And because it's main for sake, we got to have the lobster, right? In fact, what's up with that? I've been pushing Zamboni for lobster rolls since day one, and he's neatly managed to avoid the subject. But here, I get my steamed lobster, at least. I know it's a cliche, main, lobster scene, but still, good is good. Yeah, this is summer food, but I mean, they really are the best in the world. Oh, yeah. I think we did good here today. Beautiful thing. Good stuff, good stuff, yeah. First time I sat down in this dining room in almost 20 years. Seriously. Yeah. I'm honored. Hey, we're making history on this show. I never <laughs> Maybe so. Well, people have said that cooking is not a calling, it's an affliction. I mean, I look at the stove like it's my buddy, like it's my dog. You talk to your food? I do. Oh, that. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Jesus, yeah. Oh, well, yeah, you talk with it. You talk to the frying pan. I got so. I mean, you've been here 20 years. Almost 20 years. Uh, yeah. Do you ever eat around? You eat at other people's restaurants? Mm -hmm. I've only been up on Main Street six times. I mean, why, why, why never? Why didn't you go to Main Street? Um, not a people. Nothing, person. not, no, no. Very, very, I'm surprised I'm even sitting with you this long. And me too, I'm flattered. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. flattered. <laughs> there are a few essential elements you find in the spirit of a Mainer. A humble appreciation of well-crafted things, wit dry enough you may not know when the joke ends and when it begins, and most importantly, a love for the land and the sea. John Conti wasn't born here, but he is surely all of these things.